Looking at this data, which is concerts by singer, I can see that if I filter for Dua Lipa, I get 165,000 in here. However, if I want to change that to Beyonce, and I can see that now it's 150,000. And that's all well and good, but you lose it as soon as you remove the filters. So what we want is a way to address that. So if I click in here, I can see a pivot table. And that will show the comparison right next to each other, which is really useful. It will also show you, for example, how many cities there are in each one. Beyonce only performed in one city, whereas Dua Lipa performed in two cities. So my name is Dave and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickler Workplace, I'm covering in my channel. And this video, we're going to cover how to do pivot tables in Google Sheets. And if you've already tried them and had issues with them, I'm going to show you the exact ways that people tend to struggle and how to overcome those issues. All right, let's get started. So here we are with the table and I have color coded the columns. I'll explain why later on. I'm going to go to insert pivot table after I've selected all the data. I'm going to go to existing worksheets and click on this button and choose this cell. Press OK and create. And now I have this kind of blank template and my pivot table editor here on the right. Now this is really, really important for how we're going to build our pivot table. So starting off with the one I gave in the demo, I'm going to drag singer into rows and I'm going to drag sales into values. And now I have 150,000 for Beyonce, Dua Lipa 165, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because it's a pivot table, as the name implies, I can also pivot it to see it in a different way. So I can go to country and drag that into rows. And now I have first broken down my country and then broken down by singer with these two columns. But what about if I wanted it the other way around? I can actually just drag singer on top of country like this. And now it's first breaking it down by singer. That's the leftmost column and then country after that. Probably in this case, country should be above because there's only two categories for it. I can also choose what to do with these ones. So I can tick on repeat row labels. You can see what that's done. Take that off. And I can also choose whether to look at show totals. I will show it for everything or show it just for the singer like that. Or I adjusted the view a little bit and you can collapse this one and then you can see more. Now, if you want to drag country into columns, you can see this kind of arrangement where you have across the top, you have the columns. You can also change the sort order. So I can say sort by sum of sales and then I can choose which country. I can say sort by UK ascending. Now I'll change that to descending order or sort by grand total, et cetera, et cetera. So this can be a really, really useful way to do it. You can also sort horizontally. Much easier to do the sorting options than in Excel's pivot tables, just saying. Now, the things that I find, the red hurdles that people sometimes overcome is that they don't necessarily give too much thought into what goes into rows, columns, etc., And they just end up putting things in different places. And they end up with a chaotically huge pivot table that doesn't make sense. And then they're just like, I can't do pivot tables. Well, I'll give you one tip to avoid that. Just don't be afraid to click on the clear all button up here and then start from scratch. And once you've done that, just start again and think about what goes where. Now I had color coded the columns before because you need to think about how to break them down. So the orange ones are essentially categorical. The blue ones are calculation based and the red ones are free type. Now where do these go in the pivot table parameters? The free type ones, you're never going to analyze this. So leave this out of the pivot table ones. The categories, these can go into rows, columns, or also filters and slices, and the values is usually calculations. Although the categorical ones can become calculations, as we'll see in a sec as well. So let's go back to our pivot table. So over here, you can see how I've color coded them, and we're going to use that color code to think about where to put things in. So in rows, I can also click on add here, and I'm going to choose date, and then I'm also going to choose in values to add female spectators. Now with dates, you have a certain thing that you can do when they are in your categories. You can right click and you can choose create pivot date group and you can choose then month and year. This is the one that I almost always do. This is how you can do um, dates and you can also do different types of aggregations. So for example, I'm going to drag in female spectators a second time in there. Then I'm going to drag in sales and then I'm going to drag in city. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose different aggregation types for each one. So in the first one, sum, that's fine. In the second one, I'm going to keep sum, but I'm going to choose show as percent of grand total. In sales, I'm going to choose 
average. And then city. So I have actually dragged a categorical field into values. The default type for text values is count out, which means how many rows are there associated with that? So you might think this is telling me that there were four cities in August, but that's actually not the case. Let me show you by doing my filters. So if I filter for all the August dates, there you go. Now I've got Manchester twice, Bristol and London. So this is actually just three cities. Let me remove my filters. I'll show you the one that I need. Instead of count R, I'm going to have count unique. Now it's just going to be three. And this is something you can't currently do in Excel, same as median that you can't currently do in Excel. So the aggregation types that you can change are really useful. You can also choose whether to show them in columns or rows. Usually I would do columns, but rows can be something that you adjust in certain cases. What about if you bring this to your boss and your boss is like, there is no way that there were 157,000 female spectators in June of 2018. Well, what you can do is you can double click on any field in a pivot table and Google Sheets will create a new worksheet with just the table that makes up that information. It's not linked to the original table. It's just a quip sub analysis. You may want to remember to delete that worksheet after you're done because otherwise you'll just get them growing and growing. You can rename them, by the way. So I can say F spectators. All right, I'm going to go clear all. By the way, suggested will just give you some suggestions that Google Sheets thinks you might like. If you do have a numerical field that you do want analyzed, uh, this can be used for like average age or things like that. Then you can drag in sales and you can right click on then and choose create pivot group. And you can say minimum can be zero, maximum can be 100,000 and group by 20,000. Press OK. And now we'll do them in groupings like this. So this can be another way to create kind of like a histogram analysis and you can edit it here as well. All right, so let's go to one of these standard ones. Filters, you're able to do them in the regular way if you just add a filter up here, but this will only filter for the column that you're currently on, which is city. Let's say you wanna filter for something else. So you can go to singer and drag that into filters. And then you can choose either filter by condition. Uh, one that I often use here is, is not empty, um, but then also you can select the ones like that and then filter that way. Couple of quick things to note, as opposed to Excel, you can edit it live. So if I was to just add in a new city in here, so let me go with, for example, Lyon, another city in France, then it will just add it in there and change it there. If I cut and paste this one, you lose what you have on the, on the right. You can click here to edit. You can copy and paste and create new versions of the same pivot table. But another thing that I like to show instead of filters is in the data tab, add a slicer. So this is the same columns. The same rules apply. Choose something that is categorical. So let's go with sponsor. And then here, if I drag it, I can see that I can choose Again, my filters, the same idea, but this will filter the source data and then filter my output slicer data. The advantage of this, as opposed to a filter, is that you can have your slicer applying to multiple different things. So here I have the slicers that applied to them. And as I select this, this will affect both pivot tables as well as the source data. Excel doesn't affect the source data. It does affect multiple pivot tables. You can also create interactive dashboards. And I have another video where I talk about interactive dashboards that do use slices, kind of like what I've shown you here. If you want to change your source data, you can edit it through this. And if you add new rows in your data, you will need to edit it that way. As opposed to the regular Excel, if you write equals and select a cell, then it will not give you a weird get pivot data reference. That is a really stupid Excel experience in my opinion anyway. People love it when I show them how to disable that in Excel. So my name is David Benham and I hope you've enjoyed that video. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.